Stones fell like rain in the Qingyang district. They struck dead more than 10,000 people. All of the people in the city fled to other places. All of these are quotes about the deadliest meteor shower in human history. But it might have never happened. Let me tell you about the 1490 Qingyang event. Meteor showers themselves are no mystery. For millennia, humans have looked up to the night sky and perhaps been lucky enough to be graced with the sight of a shooting star or a meteor. So they made their way into art, literature, and eventually science. For hundreds of years there have been reports about meteors, but it was only in the early to mid 1800s when individuals such as Adolf Kuitlet, I'm probably pronouncing that horribly, started studying their frequency, and what those studies found is that there are huge peaks and troughs of meteor frequency throughout the year. Now sometimes these peaks and troughs would actually occur annually, you'd see the same patterns year on year, and sometimes you didn't, but I digress. What these studies allowed us to do is understand not only the meteor showers themselves, but generally paved the way to understanding the cause of them. Comets. Comets are objects made up of rock and ice that are scattered in orbits all throughout outer space. As a comet gets closer to a star, such as our sun, it gets exposed to more intense sunlight, causing some of the ice to vaporise. As it does so, it may break apart some of the rock that surrounds it, and this loose material gives the comet a surrounding atmosphere of dust, rock and gas that, as the comet continues to move, forms a tail. Now, if Earth's orbit crosses into one of these tails, the solid fragments of it, known as meteoroids, will enter our atmosphere. They themselves will vaporise, forming the lighting phenomenon we know as a meteor. Now, it's estimated that each year, only around 500 fragments will survive the trip through the Earth's atmosphere and make it to the surface of the Earth, these surviving fragments being called meteorites. But many of them will land in the ocean, because, well, there's a lot of ocean. Now that averages out to... Siri, what's 500 divided by 365? It's about 1.3698. Now that averages to 1.3698 meteors a day. So, when the official history of the Ming Dynasty says that stones fell like rain, that's a pretty big deal. The official history of the Ming Dynasty. This is a really well-renowned source. It's a go-to for historians, and so it's saying that something happened is pretty much the best confirmation we're gonna get that something happened in Qingyang. However, here's the problem. It doesn't say much else. Crucially, while some less reliable local sources say that tens of thousands of people died, the official history of the Ming Dynasty doesn't say anything about any deaths at all. Now, of course, we can speculate about why this might have been. Perhaps there were political reasons behind not mentioning 10,000 deaths, because having 10,000 people in one of your provinces die for a reason entirely out of your control, it's not the best look. But truthfully, it is so incredibly unlikely that 10,000 people died from a meteor shower. The local sources actually give us some description about the supposed meteorites, saying that the larger ones were like goose eggs and the smaller ones were like water chestnuts, and that they weighed anywhere from two to five catties, a catty being a traditional Chinese measurement often used when weighing food and groceries. That is one heck of a comet tail to produce so many surviving large fragments. But it's not entirely impossible. In fact, it's happened twice before. Two meteor showers, the Pultusk and the Holbrook, have actually each produced over 10,000 meteorites. Remember, that's surviving fragments which have reached the ground. However, said ground was in remote areas, so it couldn't do too much harm. But the existence of those other meteor shower examples hasn't stopped some people from actually comparing the descriptions of what happened in Qingyang to just a bad hailstorm. But let's assume that it did rain meteorites the sizes of water chestnuts and goose eggs. Stones of that size and weight, travelling at high velocities, are probably going to hurt, but they're also probably going to miss you. There are very few reports of people actually being hit by meteorites, and only one of them has ever actually been verified. Because, for the rest, well, a meteorite is a great scapegoat for more shady goings-on. 
If large amounts of people are going to die from a meteorite shower, it's likely not going to be from meteorites impacting individuals. What's more likely is that a meteorite will come down, strike a structure, damage it, cause it to collapse, and then it's the building collapse that would kill people. Now this is slightly disputed, but meteorites actually land cold, so the only way that they could start a fire is if they strike a building and damage its fireplace, and if said fireplace already had an active fire going in it, which would then be able to spread elsewhere. However, the sources we have don't mention anything like that. They don't mention any structural damage, they don't mention any fires, and those sources are all we really have to go off of for understanding what happened. Now, for a variety of reasons, China actually has a really poor track record of finding meteorites, so we can't actually expect them to dig up and find any of the meteorites from a meteor storm 500 years ago, which we're not even dead sure happened. So, ultimately, the Qingyang event is going to remain a mystery. However unlikely it is that a meteor shower of such proportions will occur and possibly wipe out tens of thousands of people, the fact that we have these records, we have this story, we have this idea that maybe something did happen, as we look up towards the night sky hoping to wish upon a shooting star, it leaves us asking, could it again? If this video you just watched looks familiar, Probably because it is. I originally released that video on a different channel called Disasters Documented, which I started up, realised was confining me to too much of a niche, and then gave up on fairly swiftly. I'm hoping to do more explainers like this, and I'm gonna aim for doing one every three weeks, but I do have to balance that with uni work, and I won't lie, I've not done a very good job of doing that so far. Anyways, whether it's you watching it again a few months later, or whether this video is new to you, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, where I'd already talked about Disasters Documented being shut down, and um, yeah, have a nice day.